Fables Radio, an unofficial audio adaptation of the graphic novel series Fables by Bill Willingham. Chapter 4, Borrowed Time. Colin. Hey, you big guy. So, what's all this, huh? Mm, I put you on the truck upstate myself. Yeah, and I hopped off the truck a block and a half down the road. Remind me again why I put you up every time you escape from the farm. Because, by staying here, I'm a living symbol of your last and redemption. Who's gonna doubt that you're a reformed wolf when your old nemesis can survive sleeping in your apartment? <laughs> nemesis. All right, all right. I hate it up on the farm, pigs. I'm a sophisticated pig, and I belong in the city. How's about this time I just rat on you? Snow White's gonna have a lot less patience for your crap. Speaking of the lovely lady, what you still doing on your murder wall here? It's not... It's just a list. People of interest. You don't trust a damn person in this town, do you? Everybody I talk to has missing pieces to their story. How am I supposed to catch a murderer when I can't get a decent lead from it? It's none of your business, Colin. <laughs> have it your way. <sighs> well, I'm going to bed. You're going back to the goddamn farm. Final warning, Hamhock. <laughs> The situation with your sister is tragic, Miss White. Oh, awful, unfortunate business. I understand you're assisting Bigby with his investigation. Yes, Mr. Mayor. I know it's not the normal way of things, but in this case I thought it was appropriate to combine our efforts to resolve this quickly. I know that there might be some controversy given that I'm family. No, of course. No trouble there. Entirely understandable. Blood relations need to look after each other. Well, we can let other business slide for a day or two, uh, only... Sir? Ah, well, I received a call last night. A complaint, actually. Bluebeard. Big annual donor, community leader. I'm familiar. Well, he claims that you and Mr. Wolf brought forth some very grave accusations. Burst in on him, screaming and shouting. To be accurate, we didn't burst in on him. Bluebeard invited us. But... The rest is mostly true. Sheriff Bigby did accuse him, rather loudly, of murder. Well, whatever was he thinking? I have no idea. It came out of the blue. In fact, he did the same thing with Jack of the Tales. So far as I can tell, the Sheriff's sole strategy seems to consist of going from suspect to suspect and accusing them. Not a thing to rush, of course. I understand. But it's been over a week now, and there's been no real progress. Do you think Bigby may be in over his head? After all, he wasn't a detective in the old lands. He was a beast of the most unruly sort. A killer. Is this job too much for him? <sighs> Who's to say? So far, he's been the poster child for reform. His record's been spotless since the general amnesty. And I don't know enough about the detective racket to fairly evaluate his performance. Well, this is all such bad business. Horrible to contemplate. But still, in the face of such tragedy, we must consider other matters, too. Remembrance Day is almost upon us again. Any way to have this mess cleared up by then? I couldn't say. Fable Town is our first responsibility, you and I. It's, it's all on our shoulders. It's a noble experiment, yes, but fragile, tenuous made up of a dozen factions and hundreds of old grudges. It could easily come apart over this incident. I realize that. Do what you need to, but have this wrapped up by the gala. Yes, sir. <sighs> I'm surprised the mayor managed to wait a whole week before pressuring us to settle the case. You heard all of that, I take it. Yeah, well, you know. What big ears I have and all. Can we talk in your office? Sure, yeah, come on in. Listen, I'm, uh, I'm sorry about the other night. I shouldn't have dropped the news about Rose on you like I did. No, I'd rather you were straight with me than try to spare my feelings. 
What do you want to talk to me about? So long as it's not about the case. It's about the case. <sighs> I know that the investigation's been rough, but I still don't think it's a good idea for Remembrance you to be... Day is tomorrow. It's more than a big party. We get most of our contributions that night. Our operating budget for the next year. And wallets get tight when donors lose confidence in the government. There's already too much evidence floating around from gossip. We're not talking about this. What else do you need to figure out who killed Rose? Jack seems like the obvious choice, doesn't he? <sighs> you have him in custody, but you're still questioning other fables. Which tells me that, despite all the noise you made when you arrested him, you're not sure he's guilty. Am I right? Feel free to chime in. When you're off my list. <sighs> Does everyone think that I wanted my sister dead? You and Rose haven't been friends for a long time. Which has been public knowledge for years. Centuries. If I really hated her enough to kill her, why would I wait until now to act on it? Because until recently, you weren't the number two authority in the Fable Town government and able to throw your weight around to cover your tracks. Against my wishes, you've inserted yourself into my investigation and you have the power to fire me if I get too close. Not a bad advantage for a murderer to have. And if I ever do decide to kill anyone, I'll keep that in mind. I would never hurt her. I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't consider everyone. You need an alibi for the night Rose went missing. I was in my office until around two. Can anyone verify that? Buffkin. <laughs> anyone else? Boy Blue stays longer than I do most nights. And I saw Flycatcher mopping up on my way up to my apartment. We spoke for a minute or two. Isn't that it? <sighs> I got takeout that night. Grimble signed for it at the front desk. That was around 9 o'clock, I think? Okay. Is that enough? For now. <laughs> really? I was expecting the same bedside manner you gave your other suspects. Do I not warrant you barging into my home and accusing me of murder? I can drop by tonight if it'll make you feel more included. I, uh... When are you planning to see Charming again? Never would be nice. Why? Call him up. Say you want to help him sell his title. I've got an idea. Why would you care about Charming's idiotic plan? What are you up to? Just a convoluted scheme to make everything come out right in the end. Maybe avoid more bloodshed. Keep the Fable community from disintegrating in the process. Probably won't work, though. So glad you've come to your senses, darling. <sighs> will get you out of my hair the fastest. Oh, don't be so sour about it. It's mutually beneficial. Everyone gets what they want. Your little lottery idea will drum up excitement during the gala, loosen some wallets... Directly into your pocket. Yes, I restock my coffers a bit. But someone's getting themselves a royal title. We're making life a little better for everyone. Some more immediately than others. Shall we toast to it? Let me buy you a drink. Thanks, but I've got the lady covered. Ah, I thought the air had gone foul. Evening, Sheriff. Would you mind giving us a minute, Miss White? <sighs> Not at all. Good night, Charming. Look forward to doing business with you. Snow, mm. I did actually get you a drink at the bar. Oh, uh, If you want one. You like wine, right? Red? I, I do. If you want something else, I've got a tab open. You can just... No, that's... Thank you. Yeah. Get what you need from him, but don't do anything I wouldn't, okay? So I'm decking him? <laughs> I'll be at the bar. Yeah. <sighs> Barking up an exceptional tree shop. Someday you'll have to tell me where you get the energy to swing at a whole family forest. <sighs> Meaning? Rose Red disappeared a few days after you got back into town. Nice coincidence, huh? I had nothing to do with that. Leave me be, Wolf. Your pampered lifestyle started going downhill shortly after Snow caught you two in bed together. That is private, and none of your business. We both know you're too much of a narcissist to ever blame yourself for your many failings. So did you blame Rose instead? Been nursing a grudge all these centuries. You are a tedious small man, and in need of more frequent bathing. Excuse me, I have a drink waiting for me? Thank you. Deputy Mayor. Oh, hello, Kay. How are you? At peace, my lady. I'm glad to hear it. Actually, now that I have you here, I was wondering if I could... Oh, oh my god. Kay, your eyes! Ah, uh, yes, it's been a while since we've seen one another. Or much of anything in my case. I don't understand how you can continue to do that to yourself. Pain is a small sacrifice to make for months of blissful 
precious darkness. It only lasts months now? Yes, well, uh, they do insist on growing back, don't they? Compliments of that wretched Snow Queen and her well-tread story. There must be a better way to find peace than mutilating yourself. I will not tempt myself to look upon another. I have seen too much truth and sin. Every evil deed a person has committed in their life. No visions of the good, only the evil in minute detail. Can you imagine what it's like to know such things? It's better not to see it all. I wish there was something I could do. Nothing to be done. Old magics. But something seems to be troubling you, my lady. Perhaps I can help. You've heard tell of my sister Rose. What happened to her? Yes, I did. My condolences. The Sheriff and I are investigating. And you were hoping for some insight on your suspects. Have you ever seen Jack? Briefly. The boy's got more sins than most. Do you think he's capable of murder? He has a known history of violence, giants and the like. Nothing premeditated. Brash, off the cuff, but he never planned ahead to take a life. I see. There are too many of us violent, dark, bloody histories. We're trying to move on from all that. Give everyone a fresh start. Then we are resigned to carry our sins alone, aren't we? Taken a good look at me, have you? I would never dare, my lady. Why is that? How does the saying go? Pure as the driven snow? In my experience, winter has always been the harshest and most unforgiving of seasons. <laughs> I'm not sure how to take that. Perhaps as I do. As a comfort. But despite the monolith of the fabled town government working so diligently to preserve itself, in the end, its deputy mayor is just one of us. Snow. Hey, Kay. Good evening, Sheriff Wolf. Looks like Charming still has all his fingers. How did it go? Not as productive as expected. Nothing? No. I wish you and Sheriff Bigby the best in your investigation. Thank you for your time, Kay. Please, come find me after the gala tomorrow. I would... I would speak with you more about this. As you like, my lady. We'll leave you to your evening. We need drinks. I haven't even finished my first glass. You gotta start catching up, boss. Come on, I'm buying. You're overextending again. No, I'm not. Put more force behind the thrust. Back to position. On guard. If you're going to advance, advance like you mean it! You aren't back in your glass slippers. Waltzing at a dress ball. A modicum of grace is important, but you get no points here for delicacy, princess. <sighs> Good lunch, but you let your point drift off target. I didn't want to risk skewering you. Then you're wasting my time, and yours. <sighs> your ex-husband fancied himself a dipped hand with a blade. It's a wonder he didn't pass along any useful skills before he set you aside. We didn't trade fencing techniques so much as a lifetime of bitter resentment. Fencing? <laughs> we fight with real weapons, princess, and we shed real blood. How do you expect to win back your lands prancing about with a foil? Made all my money in the divorce, actually. And will you stop? Saying princess like that. <laughs> like what? <sighs> like what you really want to call me is toad sucking pond scum. <sighs> <sighs> You're in a mood. Yeah, well, murder doesn't exactly calm my nerves. Murder? Bigby's changed his mind about the Rose Red investigation. Rumor has it that her creepy boyfriend did the deed. You mean Jack? Yeah. Bigby took him into custody on day one. I hadn't heard. <laughs> the way people are talking about it, you'd think they found him dancing around naked, wearing bits of her skin. <laughs> ah, 
fucking shit! Watch it! We're at war, princess. Get used to it. What is up your ass? <sighs> Jesus, I'm bleeding. It will heal in a moment. Feel blessed that the mundane are so fond of that lovely face. you can handle it. Really? You hesitate and I'm gonna take it back. Okay, okay. Where do we start? Evidence. We've got Rose Red's apartment. Trashed for the most part, blood everywhere. You confirmed it all to be Rose's. Yeah. What about witnesses? Jack claimed he found the apartment like that and then came to you. I chatted with some of the neighbors. Said there was loud music and lots of noise that night, but nobody could say if it sounded like a struggle. What about her mundane friends? Rose is always throwing parties, right? Yeah, I tracked down a few from her phone, but most of them were too strung out to even identify Jack's face in a photo, let alone confirm anything from the night of the incident, so we can't know for sure who was at the apartment. I could smell Jack all over the place, though. All we've got is Jack's word that he and Rose started dating again. The only thing we've actually been able to prove is that Rose was formally engaged to Bluebeard. Which I'm still coming to grips with, honestly. Don't forget the windfall of cash you found in Jack's bank account. Happened around the time Rose got her dowry payout last year. But there's no hard evidence that the money is connected. We don't know where Jack's income was coming from, and Bluebeard's kept the details of the dowry remarkably close to his chest. Guess he cares more about his privacy than the safety of his fiancée. A million dollar reward for her murderer is pretty convincing. Not as much as I would have expected, though. He's not exactly digging deep for that kind of money. Maybe it's a smokescreen. Bluebeard gets jealous when Rose dumps him to go back to Jack, so he does his trademark horrible thing to her. Bluebeard's M.O. was killing his wives on the wedding night. <laughs> we just throwing the whole general amnesty thing out the window then? If there's a pattern of behavior that might point to Rose's killer, I don't want you ignoring it anymore. <laughs> yes, ma'am. You seemed keen on Frau Totenkinder for a split second. Until you butted in on my interview. <laughs> Excuse me, who found out about Jack trying to buy a glamour spell? Nah, he's sticking to his story that he was buying it for a friend. And I'm sure you trust Jack about as far as I could throw him. So why would he really need that kind of magic? To pretend to be someone else? For some con? Or to sneak into his ex-girlfriend's apartment. You did say no one broke into Rose's place by force that night. If she and Jack were on bad terms, maybe he needed a glamour to get into one of her parties. Pose as someone she trusted. Uh, Jack's been a perpetual pain in my ass since day one of the exile. He's a weasel, but he's never struck me as a cold-blooded killer. I've been wrong before, though. <sighs> I have no clue what's going on in your head right now about all this. <laughs> Dangerous proposition there. What do you think happened to Rose? I think your sister got involved with men who bring trouble down on people's heads. I think that there was a lot of money in play, and a lot of untrustworthy folk. That crime scene wanted to scare us into not looking at our own people. What if it was the adversary, though? Maybe the bloody conquest didn't stop with driving us out of the homelands. Maybe some of his agents followed us into exile to wipe us out. Maybe this is just the start. And these shadowy assassins were just sitting on their hands this whole time waiting to strike. So now we've been parked on this block since before this place was a country. I'm not writing it off, but more likely someone from inside the Fable community is to blame. Why does that feel like a comfort? It really shouldn't. Because our lives are messy enough without a boogeyman. Last call. We should head out. Uh, first I'm getting a refill. You want something different? You've been nursing that for an hour. Some of us have to play host just tomorrow night, remember? Tonight, actually. Remembrance Day started 20 minutes ago. Come on, have another drink. We'll toast to the homelands. You have a case to solve. And a deadline. Yeah, yeah. How about I walk you home? Sure. Uh, let me just grab some fries. For some reason, Jack gets cranky when I don't feed him every day. Night, Snow. Good night. Grimble, hey. Up and at him. Uh, uh, <clears throat> evening, Sheriff. I'm sorry to interrupt your grueling nap schedule. 
I need the keys to the detention cell. What you got there? Late night snack for the prisoner. You trying to fan him up for the slaughter or something? If you gotta treat prisoners this well, I'll volunteer for a cell. What are you talking about? High Lord Mucky Muck just brought your boy a big damn meal not ten minutes ago. Garlic roasted hen. If my nose ain't lying to me. Who? Bluebeard. His own royal self. Said you authorized it. Ah, shit. Bigby, what's wrong? Get back up. Now, go! I didn't do anything to her. You might as well tell me everything now, boy. Save yourself some pain. I'm content to cut at you all night. Jesus Christ! Drop the knife and back away from the boy, or I'll rip your fucking throat out. <laughs> After all these years, the true beast emerges. Finally tired of hiding behind Miss White's skirt? Or is it under? I said drop him, shitbag. It was only a matter of time before you reverted to your old ways, wolf. Nature cannot be denied. Get him, Bigby. He's trying to kill me. <laughs> Nonsense. If I were trying to kill him, he'd be dead now. Mm. I don't intend to kill the boy until after I've bled the truth out of him. I already told you the truth. Was it because I wouldn't throw my money at you? You try to swindle me out of half my fortune. And when Rose Red finally catches wise to what a loser mm. you are, Take it out on her? What? No! What are you talking about? This flea has been hounding me for years, begging me to invest in his crackpot schemes. I have refused him every time. Hey now, there were some legitimate opportunities for portfolio enhancement. Mm, but okay, yeah, sure, you know, let's not worry about business right now. Give me an hour, Wolf, and young Jack will beg me for the chance to tell us what he did to Rose and where we can find her, or her body. That's not the way we do things anymore, Bluebeard. Back away from him, now. If I gotta lay hands on you, it won't end till one of us is dead on the floor. <laughs> do you imagine you'd be the first of your kind I've had to kill? I kept my lance free of such vermin for centuries. Always from the safety of a lance's distance, I bet, with plenty of lackeys around. Let's see how you do this time with only one thin tooth to help you. You won't reach me before I slit the boy's throat. How about you don't do that then? Be my guest. One less menace in my life. Big B, don't put ideas in his head. <laughs> He's just kidding, Bluebeard. Don't listen to him. He, he actually likes me a lot. And then I could kill you with full justification. Wait, wait, both of you. We don't want to talk ourselves into rash actions here. Let's all step back, take a deep breath, declare a minute's moratorium on the chest thumping, and see if we can't think things through a bit more rationally. Okay? Mm -hmm. Guys? Big B! Damn it! We're here, Miss White. I will... I will defend you with my life... Ah, oh. My swords are heavy, aren't they? He locked the door. Ah. Big B! The sword you requested, ma'am. Thank you. Grimble, get the door open. Yes, ma'am. Oh, God, no. No, no, no. With the keys, Grimble. Your keys. Miss White, I think someone's coming. Grab that shoe, will you? Fuck you. I need a doctor. Calm down, you're fine. <clears throat> oh, there. Where's the fire? We were coming to your rescue. My hero. Are you alright? What happened? Where's Bluebeard? He volunteered to take Jack's place in custody. I hope he likes the cell because he's going to be in it for a long time. I caught him in the middle of torturing Jack with a carving knife. What? Why? Apparently, he caught wind of the more outrageous rumors about what happened to Rose. I'm guessing you didn't rip each other apart, then? I took a play out of your book, actually. Really? I reminded him that if he were to kill Jack, right in front of me, no less, 
not only would he have capital punishment to contend with, but his property and assets would be forfeit to the Fabletown government. Since he's got a bit more history with his fortune than his fiance, he seemed willing to let bygones be bygones. You're serious? Yeah, actually. Kind of unsettling, watching a giant wolf talk about property law. That is... the most reasonable thing you've done in the last month! You still sound angry. Yeah, well, you... you locked the door. I'm sure the monkey would have cut quite the imposing figure. <laughs> Sorry. So Bluebeard's not the murderer? Doesn't look like it. He was pretty torn up about Rose. Seemed convinced that Jack was the one who did it. Okay, so why is Jack not still in his cell? For his personal safety. I'm putting him under house arrest for now. Hey Grimble, take Jack up to use the first aid kit behind the desk, and then get him to his apartment and make sure he stays put. Easy! Ugh, I'm bleeding. Will there be anything else, ma'am? You can go back to the office, Buffkin. Thank you. Ma'am! What are you planning to do with the toad sticker, anyway? Bluebeard is every bit the swordsman you're not. One good shot with this would have been enough. It's the Vorpal Blade. Of Jabberwocky fame? Kills in one cut. Snicker snack and all that? Does all the fighting for you. <laughs> what? Go to the gala with me. Pardon? You heard me. What do you say? Suffer being on my arm for a night? How is this in any way appropriate right now? If there's any chance of everything working out, I've got to be at the ceremony tonight. And you need to go as my date. Really? It's all very complicated. Can't explain it just yet. Be my date? <sighs> Fine. Yes. I will go with you. Good. Hard part's over. <laughs> Wait, the hard part was asking me out? I hadn't anticipated you pointing an enchanted sword at me when I did, so... Oh! Sorry. So, uh... How's this work? Do I buy you a corsage or something? <laughs> Please, no. Just look presentable. Don't worry. I got an in with a friend who knows an elf. What? I'll try not to make you look too bad. Enjoy. End of Chapter 4 Next time on Fables Radio, our finale, Chapter 5, Remembrance Day. <laughs>